Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Let's Reason Together podcast. My name is Chantal, and this is... Victor. We're so happy that you could join us today. We're very, very sorry that we missed you guys last week, but... We're we're back. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we're back, and we're grateful to be back with you guys. So, Victor, what do you want to say to our wonderful, wonderful... I want to take the blame. No, uh, we're sorry we... Deeply sorry we missed last week. I mean, it even made a, like, a, I was expecting a video to come out. And I'm like, man, I'm, we missed the, the uh, for some unforeseen circumstances, we missed last, week, last week's recording. But we're back, and we're excited, and we're getting back into Daniel Chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Um, w- if you've loved the content so far, listen, we had a week off, and if you were able to see past episodes, if you enjoyed the... You know, from the beginning, I heard one guy tell me he started at Daniel one and to the episode of episode one all the way to catching up now. So if you've done that, we appreciate you. We appreciate the support. We appreciate our all our subscribers. If you haven't subscribed uh, because there's new subscribers, Chantal, I saw that it's going up and up every week. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Um, If you haven't subscribed, do that. Uh, Let's Reason Together podcast on YouTube. If you want to watch the live um, you know, the videos, I mean, why subscribe to our YouTube channel, listen on Spotify. If you can't watch, um, the videos go to our Spotify, let's reason together podcast, and you can view it there and, um, hit the like button, hit the notification button. So you can get our lives when we do a live pretty soon in a couple of weeks, we're going to do a live. I know many of our subscribers like that Chantal. So, uh, mm-hmm. we're back and I'm hyped and I'm happy and um, I'm excited, Chantal. This is going to be a great chapter, a great study. Where great are we thing. in? I think we're in Daniel chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the foundation for all end time prophecy. We haven't got there yet. It's in the later chapters, but this is the lead up. Mm-hmm. But before we get, uh, you know, ahead of ourselves, uh, let's pray. So uh, whoever's listening, watching, let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. Um, that we're back, that you provided uh, a way for us again to record and to study your word and to have another episode, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Uh, We need it. Chantal and I need it, and we need most of all the inspiration of your spirit um, tonight. So bless us. Be with those who are listening and watching and fill them with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter two. Yes, yes. Two weeks ago, we we got into a lot of stuff. I mean, we got into the magicians, Mm -hmm. the uh, astrologers, the sorcerers, the the Chaldeans, the king's dream. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot. But we left off on Nebuchadnezzar basically threatening them and then bribing them, Mm -hmm. bribing them to tell them Mm -hmm. this crazy I mean, when you think about it, Chantal, it's it's like a little it's it's kind of crazy. Like, tell me a dream that I can't remember. And then the interpretation <laughs> that I don't know. And I don't remember the dream, but you'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. That's where we left off. Yes, that is where we <laughs> left off. So um, they were said, li- listen, and if you can't do it, we'll kill you. It, I'll kill you. I'll destroy all the wise men. And um, if you can, you'll, you'll be made great men. And you'll receive gifts and rewards and great honor in Daniel chapter two, verse six. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we left. We Mm kind of saw how Babylon deals with emergencies. Uh, They, they, Nebuchadnezzar has no time to play around. He wants what he wants and he wants it now. Mm -hmm. And at the risk of just like human life, like I'll just kill you and get new wise men. And but mm-hmm. God it took away the dream for a purpose. God, God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to look deeper mm-hmm. and to find out that your wise men, your astrologers, your sorcerers, your magicians, your Chaldeans don't actually have a real connection with me. And I want to bring you in to contact with a real wise man. Mm-hmm. And that's Daniel. Mm-hmm. And, you know, something I mm-hmm. thought about was the scripture came to mind. I feel like it's in Jeremiah, but there's also one in Psalms 146. Like, you know, put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. Mm -hmm. 
And the first thing Nebuchadnezzar thought of when he couldn't remember the dream, okay, let me go ask, you know, yeah. all these people, yes. you know, and it's like there, you could see that's where his trust was. You mm-hmm. could see that he, he put a lot of his trust in these people. And I mean, you know, you could understand he was, spent a lot of, you know, resources training yeah. them. So he was expecting them to mm-hmm. know their trade. Right. Yeah. But it's, it's to me when I was thinking about it and sort of meditating on it, like that was a rebuke to me. Like, What's the first thing I do when there's an emergency, mm. when I don't know something or when, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, do I go to God first or do I, you know, want to call somebody yeah. like, do I want to call my dad? Like I have an emergency. Like, what do I do? Or do you want to call my mom yeah. or whatever? And so. it's not bad to counsel with people mm-hmm. with, you know, um, people of the faith who can give you sound advice. You know, Proverbs says in a multitude of counselors, there's safety, which Daniel's going to show us what mm-hmm. true you know, advices and what we're going to, you know, what you should do in an emergency. But this is a huge Babylon. uh, You know, you talk about spiritual Babylon you talk about care, the character of Nebuchadnezzar. It's using God as like a vending machine. Mm -hmm. Only when I need something, only when I'm in an emergency is when I'll call you. Um, And this is what Nebuchadnezzar does. And he's living up to the light that he has. Let's just be real. Mm. I mean, this guy is the high priest of Naboo, the God of prophecy. He's expecting these guys to be in contact with the supernatural. Mm. Like this is their job. So he's living up to the sincere, genuine light that he has. He doesn't know anything else. So in this, it's like, you guys claim to do this stuff. Like mm-hmm. you're a magician, make something happen, bro. You're a sorcerer. Go talk to some spirit to tell me what I dream. Like this is what we do. Mm. But God has a plan for Nebuchadnezzar as well as Daniel, as well as the wise men. And he wants the Nebuchadnezzar to come in contact with the true God. Mm-hmm. He saw already in, in chapter one, and we talked about it two weeks ago. He saw, wow, these young men are 10 times wiser. Wow. I get a little bit of God. Now I'm getting even more now here that we see him in his heart wondering like what's going to happen in the future. We talked about the anxiety last week, a couple weeks ago. We talked about um, him wanting to understand like, God, what is your will for my life? Mm-hmm. What is your plan for my kingdom? And many times we're like Nebuchadnezzar. Mm-hmm. We treat God as a vending machine and we call him only in emergencies. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see. We just saw in the first uh, la- two weeks ago in the first verses, verses one to six, how Nebuchadnezzar handles things mm-hmm. and maybe how we handle things. Mm-hmm. Right. But now we're going to study in verses seven to 11. We're going to s- get some more interaction there, but we're going to see how Daniel handles emergencies. Now, you mentioned going to family, friends, you know, some people go to YouTube. <laughs> They go to YouTube and it's like, you you know, the YouTube mechanics, like I'm a YouTube mechanic. I'm a Google PhD. Listen, if you want to figure something out, there's no excuse. Google it, YouTube it. It's true. But, and, and that's all good in in and of itself, Mm. but God should be the very first person, uh, that we go to in our emergencies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But many is sadly were like Nebuchadnezzar. So mm-hmm. let's dive into the scripture and see kind of where we left off. What the wise men actually uh, kind of rebuttal Nebuchadnezzar. It says in verse seven, they answered again and said, they answered again. So they already gave an answer, but Nebuchadnezzar didn't like it <laughs> and it didn't make sense to him. But it says they answered again and said, let the king tell his servants to dream. It's kind of comedic. Again, they're going in. Uh, tell me the dream. No, you tell me the dream. No, you tell me what it means. No, you tell me what it is. And it says, it says, tell us the dream and we will show you the interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. And the king said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time because ye see these things, the thing is gone from me. But if you will make, if you will, will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know the interp- that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. Wow. I mean, he's calling their bluff. Mm-hmm. It's like the rubber meets the road, Chantal. Mm. And it's being set up so perfectly by God that it's like, I, I, want, I want these guys to fail. Like, I, I, I really want Nebuchadnezzar to see that you can't put your trust in men, mm. 
and especially Satan and spiritualism and heathenism and false gods and all this mysticism that they claim to believe is, uh, uh, you know, true divinity. He wants Nebuchadnezzar to see that, man, you need to come to a higher being. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, it, this back and forth is going on. And finally, this is what the Chaldeans said. This is the last thing. The PhDs. We remember, right? Mm -hmm. These guys are the PhDs, the yeah. doctors in Babylon. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there there is no king nor lord nor ruler that acts such things of any magicians or astrologers or chaldeans they're like upset at him like dude are you crazy like nobody would ask this no king no ruler no person on earth will ask someone to tell them a dream that they can't remember and then interpret the dream that they can't remember mm -hmm. wow perfect setup for god to come in mm -hmm. but there's an interesting point here chantal and i want your feedback uh, on this, it says, and it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that could show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Here you get a perspective into the religion of, ba of Babylon. And I want you to talk about, uh, maybe I would just share your thoughts on what does this mean? The, you know, only the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh, like as opposed to Daniel's religion. Can you speak on that? The Babylon religion as opposed to um, the true God, Daniel's God, like the, what's the, the Babylonian pantheon you mean? Because, uh, you know, like you have a Greek pantheon and you have a Roman pantheon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zeus and, you know, all this stuff. So yes. the Babylonian pantheon yeah, as opposed to like you, you could see it in the verse. All right, they their concept of God, their God, mm -hmm. as opposed to Daniel's concept. Mm -hmm. Well, what I do know, right? Um, I know Marduk. It's funny. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's the enemy has a counterfeit for everything. Yes. So what I do know was that they have they had many gods, like it was numerous, but they have you know the gods that were like the the special ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, That's no. the right way to say it, but the special ones. Mm -hmm. And I do know that Marduk, which we talk about all the time. Yeah. So Marduk um, rose to fame and became known as the father creator yes. of heaven and earth mm -hmm. or whatever. So he was, you know, like really powerful or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I also know that Nabu was mm -hmm. his son yes. who was thought to be the God of, you know, pros prophecy and scribe and whatever, you know, and I know that Ishtar was also like the sexual goddess, yeah. you know, she was kind of yeah. creepy anyway. Um, but yeah, they had many gods. Mm -hmm. And so, but I felt like I read that Nabu was also the God of prophecy. So he reveals yes, he secret things. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe what they're referring to right now is that it has to be someone who lives like is not on earth, but mm -hmm. like, you know, in the, you know, like Zeus had yes. Olympus or whatever. Yeah. Like, so I, I feel like there's a Babylonian equivalent, even though I don't, I'm not mm -hmm. sure what it is. So those gods must be able to give you that secret, mm -hmm. but we can't give it to you. So I'm feeling like they're talking about Nabu because he was a God of Got prophecy you. or a revealer of secret no, things. That's a great, that's, that's a great answer. And I'm getting also to the point where, um, you know, their gods are distant. Mm. So this is where this is what what I saw. It says they recognize that they need a higher being outside mm. themselves and their gods are not with flesh. They're distant. Uh, maybe uh, the agnostic mm. view or the deist view uh, the excuse me, the deist view where God created it. Yeah, and we believe in high you. and left and he's mm. just out there somewhere. Impersonal God, impersonal God. Mm -hmm. Right. But it says and they they realize that. There's a higher being out bigger than ourselves, mm. but he's just not with us. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that and I said, here again, we can glean something in Babylon as opposed to how we should be operating as people living in the judgment, living in Babylon, spiritual Babylon, end time Babylon. Um, how should we should understand God? They understand God as, yeah, there's a higher being, but he's not with flesh. He's not a personal God. We're going to see now in these preceding verses that Daniel believes in a God that is a personal God that cares about what I'm going through and my emergencies and my struggles. The Babylonians said, yeah, we have gods, but they're, they're distant. They don't dwell with flesh, but Daniel's God 
at, <laughs> at some point in history will come in the flesh. Jesus Christ will be made flesh, right? John 1. And I want you to, Chantal, can you read something real quick? It's in First mm-hmm. John 4, verses 1 to 3. First John, I'm going to take our, our listeners and viewers to turn your Bibles to First John 4, verses 1 to 3. Hmm, beloved? Uh, 1 to 2, yes. Okay. All right, so that's First John 4, verse 1 to 2. Grab mm-hmm. your Bibles. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are go- gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Okay. So here we see John saying that there's going to be false prophets. Now in Daniel two, you see what the false prophets say. Hey, listen, God hasn't come in the flesh. Like our gods, whoever's going to interpret this is not, doesn't even associate with us. That's so deep. Now you see, now you see here, Daniel is, is going to come along and he's going to show them that Nebuchadnezzar, this God, you may have taken us into captivity. God allowed you because he's you're his servant, which he's going to find out. Um, and which we studied in Jeremiah that Nebuchadnezzar is God's servant to to uh, uh, discipline his people. He's going to find out that the God that we serve is a personal God. Mm. And this personal God sent his son to come in the flesh. And many people today, I want to look, focus on the camera. Many people today believe that Jesus came not in sinful human nature. Hmm. He didn't take our nature. Look at Jesus came. Yeah, he was on this earth, but he was divine. He, he was perfect. He, he doesn't know what I'm going through. <laughs> the Bible tells us uh, and makes it clear that Jesus in, in, in Hebrews 4, 12 to 15, that he, he knows what we're going through. Do you think... Hmm. Um... Do you think Mercy. Christians sometimes do does that? Like not in theory. Like in theory, we mm-hmm. understand that, you know, Jesus came in the flesh, was a babe, and died for our sins. Like in theory, we understand that Jesus, you know, became flesh and dwelt, dwelt among us. But when it comes to practice, we act as if he's distant. Mm-hmm. So we make mm-hmm. our own decisions. We go ahead That's of him. Right. We plan our own lives. At the beginning, you said, you know, like, we're like Nebuchadnezzar in the in in the aspect that we want to know the mm. future, want to know God's will for mm-hmm. our lives as mm-hmm. well. But a lot of times we don't consult God. So if you're in high school and you want to know what to do in college, you don't ask God. You think about, oh, what am I good at? What should I do? But we don't believe that, you know, God is a personal God that has a plan for your life. Mm. And I know there's a scripture that Lord, not a scripture, but a quote that God used to almost rebuke, but encourage me. It yeah. says that God knows what is best and God is, God knows what is good and plans for the best of his children. Yes. So it's almost as if like God has a plan and his plan is what's best for you. And it, it holds good things for you. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow, how many times have I gone ahead of God or done mm. what I want to do and missed out yeah. on what's got God's best? And in essence, we're saying that, you know, like, well, God, I don't need you. I can do what I want to do. So like yeah. maybe in theory, we understand. But in practice, oftentimes... Chantal, listen, what did we say? Like, we we would love to believe we're like Daniel. Hmm. But the Bible's showing us, like, no, nah, we're like really like Nebuchadnezzar. Emergency, emergency, emergencies come, trials come, and what are we doing? Look, we're fighting with everybody. You tell me this, you give me this. I mean, we don't, we're not calm. We're not self-possessed. Look at this guy spazzing out. Look, you don't tell me the answer. An unreasonable request, by the way, from human beings. You don't tell me my dream that I've forgotten the interpretation of. I'm going to kill you. But listen, if you ever do get it, I'll give you great rewards and riches and honor. Okay. But listen, I know you guys are trying to lie to me. You see how like Nebuchadnezzar's mental psychology is just like, dude, this guy's all over the place. And we're the same without God. When we operate in Babylonian thinking, which is I only call God in emergencies because he's a vending machine, we act just like Nebuchadnezzar. But I think too, right? So I attended this seminar when I was in Alabama called The Law of Life. Mm -hmm. And so like the kind of premise of the seminar is like we're hardwired for love. Mm -hmm. Like we're created to love and to be loved. 
whenever we are not loved, we seek for it in places, people, whatever. But the thing is that, like, when we feel like we're not getting it, then we act just like Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. So I, some, a, a lot of times our def- default is to seek or to lean on people to the point where that's very dangerous because, yeah. and I'm not saying don't have supportive yeah. friends or, you know, don't lean on family or share, but it's almost as if we are relying on them and we place them mm-hmm. in the sphere of God. Because w- what happens when they're gone? Right. Right. And sometimes God does that. Sometimes he removes things and people's okay. out of our lives because we lean it. on yep. them instead of leaning on God. Mm. And God sees if we're going to make it to, to, to the heavenly Canaan, you need to learn how to trust me. Yep. You need to learn how to walk with me. So oftentimes God does it. And Jesus, Jesus gets even more. He hits even more home. If you love mother, father, brother, sit above me, you don't love me. Mm. And that's a lesson that, all of us need to learn. But going back to your question, it Satan's main objective is to destroy God's character, to misrepresent God's character. So when a young person is saying, man, what college do I go to? Like, God doesn't want me to be successful. He wants me to be like some pastor in the country, like serving him and doing this. Like, he doesn't want me to do this. The devil wants to misrepresent God's character. So you'll think that God doesn't want you to have a happy life. God doesn't want you to... Uh, to use you to do great things in this world. So it's like, uh, maybe I should go and see what the college recruiter wants me to do. Mm. Or maybe I should go and visit, go on YouTube and see how this college is, or should I go here or there? And we don't ask God, like, God, where do you want me to go? I'm Mm. really learning, Chantal, in my personal life, in my devotions. And from Daniel, Daniel's decisions were all, God, what will honor and glorify you the most? Mm. And I think as listeners and viewers, right? Um, those who are watching this podcast and listening, I encourage you to, to, uh, incorporate that in your, in your daily life. Like, okay, I need to get this. I need a car. I, I, me personally, I need to get this. Uh, I need to get a truck for my business. God, what's going to honor and glorify you the most? Okay. I need to get, uh, you know, I need a, what am I going to wear? I need to buy some new shoes. God, what's going to honor and glorify you the most? What's going to bring you honor and you glory? And many times we think like God wants us to look raggedy or God wants us, doesn't want the best for us, like you're saying. But remember, Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. But we got to learn in trials sometimes to, do we really know God? Do we really trust God or are we just in a vending machine relationship with God? I call you for emergencies only when I want something. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes too, Victor, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I cut you off no but worries. before I forget. I think not only does he re- misrepresent the character of God, but he re- misrepresents what's true happiness and what's mm-hmm. true success. Mm-hmm. So s- I listened to someone and they said something that was very important, right? She had a child. I don't remember if it was a son or a daughter. Mm-hmm. And she says, I'm not going to give my eight year old, my 10 year old a car like you're not ready Mm -hmm. for it when you're 16, 17, 18. Then that will be the opportune time because I know you can handle the responsibilities Mm -hmm. of having a car. But I would be an unwise and unloving Mm -hmm. parent if right now, because you're crying and screaming and yelling for a car, I give you a car right now. And I think sometimes we think God is equivalent to Santa Claus. He will give us what we want because we want it. Mm -hmm. But God is a loving father. He gives good gifts to his children. So he's not going to give you a snake when you ask him for bread. That's right. You know, that's who God is. But a lot of times we think that the path to happiness, right, Mm. is the path that is sinful. So we think, oh, you know, partying, drinking, all that, you know, it's going to make me happy, you Mm. know, experimenting or whatever. But truthfully, The path that God outlines is the path of happiness. And we can see that from Genesis. You know, the enemy tempted her. You know, God is withholding something good from you. He knows that the day you eat of the Mm. fruit that God told you not to eat of, you're going to be wise. And that's not true. And oftentimes we do that. If we do the thing that God told us not to do, then we're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. But sometimes Mm. later, but oftentimes sooner than later, we find out. That that's not true. So true success comes from, as you rightfully said, from asking God what will honor him. Yeah. And true happiness comes from being obedient mm-hmm. to him. And, and so a practical lesson we can all glean from these couple chapters is, listen, 
in emergencies, turn to God Hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, just to touch on this verse 11, it's a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king, except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. We're going to study as we get into Daniel and into Revelation that Antichrist power, the papacy literally teaches this. Remember, Antichrist is not throwing Christ out the window. It's in the place of Christ. So when this, this theology of, listen, Jesus came, but not in sinful human nature. Mm. He came in all his divinity. This is why people can't relate to God, can't relate to, listen, this guy was perfect. Jesus came perfect. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what I'm going through. Listeners, I want to encourage you. Jesus knows what you're going through Mm. and he feels your infirmities. He understands and he's there with you and God loves you. Let's see how Daniel this, this whole thing is about to go haywire for Daniel. He doesn't even know. Let's see, because we want to get the practical lessons about Daniel's character. How to respond during emergency. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Chantal, can you read verses 12 to 16? Yes, sir. Now, please, listeners, viewers, keep your ears and eyes open. Study Daniel's character. How does Daniel respond? How does he act? What is his mindset? What are his words? Check this out. Oh. His logic, which is Holy Spirit driven, is beautiful. These these uh, next five verses are powerful. Okay. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Did you say to 15? 16. Okay. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would sh- shew the king the interpretation. Wow. Okay, so we get that Nebuchadnezzar's upset still. This now, mm-hmm. now they they gave the last straw in verse eleven. It's like mm-hmm. nobody can re- tell you the dream, Nebuchadnezzar, but the gods who's dwelling not with flesh. Mm-hmm. Nebuchadnezzar's like, all right, you're dead. <laughs> it's over for you. Yeah. Um, destroy all the wise men. Mm-hmm. Daniel's included in there, and it says, and the decree went forth that they should slay the wise men. Uh, that the wise men should be slain. Mm-hmm. And they sought Daniel and his fellow. So now you have Ariok. This guy is the the undertaker, man. The grim reaper's coming right to your door. Mm. And Daniel does what? He answers with counsel and wisdom. Mm. Victor. Mm, 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 mm. First, I have two things to say. Go. The first thing I was thinking about when I was doing some research for Babylon, I realized that these people were extremely advanced for their time Mm -hmm. when it comes to architecture, mathematics, science, Mm -hmm. of course, spiritualism. (laughs) They were very well educated. So I can also understand (coughs) to some extent why Nebuchadnezzar was so furious because Mm he I mean, these people, you know, we're supposed to be the top of their classes, right, you know, right. like this is what they do. Yes. If you know the hanging gardens, mm-hmm. you know, some people say it's a man. Some people say it's true. I don't know. Some people say a lot of things. Yeah. But one thing that is proposed that um, started in Babylon or was in Babylon was the hanging gardens. Yes. And supposedly Nebuchadnezzar's Persian or Median wife, I think she was Persian wife, missed her country. Yes. And so he created these very elaborate hanging gardens mm-hmm. to mimic the, the landscape. One of the seven wonders of the world. One of the seven wonders of the world. And we also know when it comes to math, um, I think it's Pythagoras theorem. Did mm-hmm. I say that right? Mm-hmm. I kind of slot of that. I'm sorry. Pythagoras but they, theorem. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, brother. You know that <laughs> they were really using that logic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yes. were using that logic. So we know in architecture. And plus, listen, Babylon's wall were like solid. Yes. Two chariots. Two and you chariots know, back thick. then, chariots mm-hmm. were like, you know, hefty stuff. Yes. Nothing, Small. Yep. So two chariots could ride side as, alongside each other on the walls of Babylon. Couple couple lanes on a highway thick. Absolutely. And also, you know, Nebuchadnezzar was kind of exquisite. You know, yeah. you know, he did like these elaborate like paintings and mm-hmm. stuff and decorative stuff on the walls of Babylon. Ishtar Gate. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Ishtar Gate, mm-hmm. another very, you know, 
thing that they talk about that yeah. was just very elaborate, you know, in terms of architecture yes. and whatever. So we know that Babylon was extremely, extremely advanced for their time, mm-hmm. advanced for their time. So you can see why the temptation is, you know, if we have all these learning, this this mm. this worldly wisdom to think, OK, I know what to do. I've been trained what to do. And so we, we were tempted to go to our knowledge, you know, everything mm. we learned in college. But as we rightfully said, Daniel's first response that we're going to read as we go down yes. was to say, OK, guys, we need to pray. Yes. But Chantal, look at this, bro. <laughs> look, look at this. Look at this. All the knowledge. You're bringing it out. All the advancement, all the knowledge, all the mathematicians, uh, mm-hmm. mathematics, the great uh, mm-hmm. Ishtar gate, the, the the hanging gardens for his Persian wife who missed her home and she's all in the desert now and he wanted to recreate <laughs> the Persian forest for her. Mm-hmm. All this. But look how my man, act, I'm getting hype. Look how he acts during emergencies. What is Nebuchadnezzar's character? Wretched, bro. I'm ready to kill. I'm ready to give you money or kill you depending on how I feel. Mm-hmm. No wisdom, no character is really actually jacked up. Like, I, he's not really a nice guy. I mean, one day he wants to kill you. The other day he wants to give you rich rewards. Then he says, actually, I want to destroy everybody. He's all or nothing thinking. Look at his brain. Look at his psychology, his mental health. He's all or nothing, all or nothing thinking, right? He wants to destroy all of them now. And Daniel's not even there. Mm-hmm. But Daniel, you know. Daniel, and I tell you, Daniel read the Proverbs. Proverbs 15, verse 1. Check this out. A soft answer, gentle wrath, like a good word, stir banger. That's right. <laughs> okay. she, see, this is why she's she's on the, she's on my right side here. Because she got way. Proverbs 15, 1 memorized. But we're going to read it for our viewers. Okay. Listen, there's an emergency. This guy says, I literally am here. Ariok is here. To cut my head off. Mm-hmm. Daniel answers, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Verse 2, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Who's truly wise and who's truly foolish? Nebuchadnezzar is foolish and Daniel is truly wise because he answers with counsel and wisdom. I'm here to chop your head off, uh, Daniel. And now I'm sitting here like I'm having coffee with Ariok. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on, Ariok? What, 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 why is, why, why is the king so hasty? It's like, I'm here to cut your head off, but because Daniel is so filled with the Holy Spirit, so charismatic and spirit filled and in favor with everybody. Listen, the undertaker is now sitting down in Daniel's house. I don't know, Daniel. Why? I don't. I actually don't know why the king is so hasty. But he told me to kill you guys, and this is why I'm here. Could you believe it? And they're having a legit conversation. It says he answered and said, it, uh, "He said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king?" Then Ariok made the thing known to the to Daniel. It's like Ariok did not have to do any of that. I'm here to kill you. Hello, head chopped off. Done. Now they're just talking because Daniel answers with counsel and wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Listeners, viewers, Victor, Chantal, we need true wisdom. Mm. We need to have a true character, the character of Daniel that he he understands. God is my judge. Mm. Now, he's super balanced, Chantal, because he's not saying, well, you know, I'm spirit filled and I'm just going to pray. No, this Daniel's logic is all or nothing for God. Check this out. Look at his look at his faith. There's a death decree. I'm supposed to kill you. I answer with counsel, counsel and wisdom, but it's not done yet. Daniel went in and desired the king that he should give him time. So Daniel goes into the king. Look at the faith. And I'm going to read some 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 quotations about faith um, and prayer. Mm-hmm. But check this out. He goes in and he desires that the king would give him more time. Look at look at the, the 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 decisiveness of Daniel. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not well. Um, I, I, well, I don't know if God's gonna no. Um, King, can I get some more time? Yeah, I, I, I'll get you that dream. <laughs> I'll get you that dream. Give me more time, and I will show you the dream and the interpretation thereof. Are you guys taking notes about Daniel? We we studied Nebuchadnezzar, what not to do, and we're in that category many times. 
Are we in the category of Daniel that when an emergency comes, we answer with calcinal wisdom? What could Daniel have done? Check this out. Who are you, Ariok? I'm a wise man. Listen, I'm 10 times wider than everybody. You're coming to kill me. Do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. But he answers with a soft word. Ariok, what's going on? Tell me, tell me why is it so hasty? Ariok sits in there and they all having a chit chat and having their nice tea, their chamomile tea and their, their nice herb teas. And they're just sitting there having a, having a good old talk. Well, give me some time. I'm going to go get some time. Victor. Mm. When I thought about that, I have something marked in my Bible, right? Yes. Actually, I got stuck at that. Not stuck, but I paused mm -hmm. at that verse. Um, verse 14. Yes. Um, because, you know, the part that says he answered with counsel and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so it triggered something in my mind. And so I went to Genesis and Exodus. Because wow. I remember I remember thinking, that sounds like familiar. The verbiage sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. So I went to Genesis and Exodus. Maybe I'll go to Exodus first, right? Okay. Exodus chapter 28, verse 3. Exodus and then, 28, verse 3. Yes, brother. Okay. 28, verse 3. Because I remember... I remember when the children of Israel were building the sanctuary in the wilderness. Okay. And so God um, told Moses that he was going to um, appoint him some people that would help to build yes. the, the temple. Mm -hmm. So verse 3 of chapter 28 says, And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, mm. that they may make Aaron's garments, to consecrate him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Mm -hmm. Right. Then I went over to like verse 30 to chapter 31. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to read the verses I think that I have highlighted. And it okay. says, so chapter 31, also verse three. Okay. And I have filled him. So he called Bezalel. Did I say yes, that? Bezalel, right. the son of Uri or whatever mm -hmm. from the tribe of tribe of Judah. And it says, and I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass mm -hmm. and in cutting stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. Right. And then verse six, which is the verse I like, it says, and I behold, I have given him a holy the mm -hmm. son of Ashima, Ashima mm -hmm. of the tribe of Dan and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted. I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. Mm. So when I thought about it, I was, I, I was meditating on, um, cause I went down further and we're yes. going to get to that part. I was thinking Daniel was not tempted. Verse 23 is my favorite, um, scripture, like verse in this chapter, because when he got in front of Bab um, Nebuchadnezzar, he wasn't tempted to take the glory to himself. When yeah. he finally got the answer, you know, we're going to read that, you know, him mm -hmm. and he and his friends prayed and God revealed it. He started praising God for how wise God is. He's a God of wisdom. He's a God of might. And I thought for one so young, he was not tempted to be, you know, like everybody wants mm. to be a YouTube star. Everybody wants to be famous. No, his first reaction, his first response was to give God all yes. the praise and I feel like, you know, Daniel knew this wisdom that you have, all the wisdom of Babylon, it didn't even come from you. That's right. Like God gave it to you. That's all right. the buildings and architecture, God put that wisdom in your heart for his own purpose. Mm -hmm. And they were giving all the glory, number one, mm -hmm. to themselves, yes. but also to the gods of Babylon. That's right. And I like in chapter, se in verse seven that we just read, mm -hmm. the wise men were just like, you know, um, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar were ready. And he said, just tell <laughs> us the dream and we will show you the interpretation. Yes. So it's all about Ooh. what we can do. Like we went to school for four years or three years. We have a degree. <laughs> we know what we're doing. We mm. got it. So just just give us a task and we'll we'll handle it. Yep. That's kind of the spirit. But Daniel was so different. He still went to school just like they did. But yep. his first response is, listen, we're going to pray and God is going to show us what to do. Wow. And I thought that was yeah. amazing. No, I, listen, viewers, listeners, are you understanding? Are you getting Daniel's like this? Daniel's like this. Daniel does this. Daniel, this is our example. Mm -hmm. As people living in the judgment, wanting to live a life like Daniel, whose name means God is my judge. 
we need to have the character of Daniel. And that doesn't come from just, you know what? I'm just going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm going to put my PhDs up there and my qualifications and my my experience. It comes with a personal relationship with this God who is Daniel's judge and who's our judge and who belongs to us and who's gracious and merciful and is going to help us. This is the God This is the experience we need, right? And Daniel, my man, Daniel, Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray. We, our prayer on this podcast is that we'll all be like Daniel. Mm -hmm. That we'll dare to be like Daniel, right? Because this is a death decree. And we're going to study as we get to Revelation, there is going to be a death decree. And how will we respond at that time? Mm -hmm. Are we going to answer? Are we going to, the people who are looking to kill us, are we going to, yeah, you know, do you know who we are? Or are we going to answer with counsel and wisdom? Are we going to have a soft word that turns away wrath? Are we going to answer as uh, 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 wise men and wise women? Or are we going to be spazzing out like Nebuchadnezzar, going crazy, d- bribing people, threatening people? If you don't do this, I, uh, you everybody's conniving against me. I mean, all or nothing thinking. Or are we going to be like Daniel? Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. That could all be good, right? Mm-hmm. Daniel answers with counsel and wisdom. But if he doesn't do what we're going to read right now, then it just doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything. Like all the good counsel, all the good wisdom is good. But if it's apart from God, it's actually foolishness. Daniel chapter two, verse 17. Turn to your Bibles there. It says, okay, he goes and gets more time. But more time for what? Let's be real. More time to Google? (laughs) More time to go to the Babylonian news and check out the Zodiac of the sorcerers and the the soothsayers? No, it says he went to his house, made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire wisdom. No. Skill? Not yet. Mercy. Mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellow should not perish, but live. Is that what the Bible says? No, it does not say that. Look at Daniel. Look what my man is praying for. He's praying for the rest of the wise men of Babylon that they should live too. If I were Daniel, you try to kill me, bro. I'm praying that we get saved and we get uh, promoted and you guys die. Let's just be real. You try to kill me and I hope you die. That's our human nature and our spirit without God. Mm -hmm. But Daniel is coming. He's praying with his friends because he has godly friends. We're going to touch on young people, uh, young at heart, adults. We need some godly friends. You're hanging out with too many co-workers that are going, uh, you know, having a drink after work. Mm Want to go see this, go see that, go do this, go do that. And in emergencies, you respond in just like Babylon. But Daniel goes to his godly friends and tells them and says, let's start praying. Mm -hmm. And let's not just pray for ourselves. Let's pray for those Babylonian wise men, mystics, sorcerers uh, who think they're all hyped on themselves. Let's pray for our enemies. Didn't Jesus talk about something about that? Mm -hmm. Mm. Verse 18, that they should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Mm. If practical, we want practical gems, right? We took a week off. Listen, but we're coming back. We're coming hard with the practical application of of character i don't care but listen i'm gonna go on a rant i'm not no i'm gonna stop we don't care listen if you get all the prophecies and all the daniel and you don't have the character it doesn't matter daniel's character is what's important here you know when i was um i'm gonna find some quotes about prayer and you can um go ahead tell me tell me what you think about these verses when i was meditating on this chapter something that came out to me because we're gonna get to the vision right Um, the dream and the interpretation of the dream. So one thing that came out to me is um, the character of the kingdom of Babylon as opposed to the character of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying, it's just replaying in my mind as well. Like Daniel was not only thinking about himself. Mm. 
He was also not thinking to glorify himself or to elevate himself. He literally was zealous for the glory of God, which is why God could reveal the secret to him. Mm -hmm. And he was also thinking of the benefit, not only of his friends, but also of the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So, right, I told you I went to Genesis and Mm -hmm, Exodus, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to jump over to Genesis and then we could read about prayer for a little bit. And so I thought about um, Joseph because I remember that Joseph was also in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I felt impressed to go there as well. So I went there and I read um, chapter 39 and 40. And so I'm going to read chapter 40, Mm -hmm. verse 8 first. And it says, right, so, you know, they were in... They were in the dungeon and, you know, the baker and the butler were in the jun- yes. dungeon as well. Right. So they had some dreams. And so this is what the response dreamers dreamers. Right. <laughs> so this is um, Joseph's response. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God. <laughs> Tell me, I pray thee. So hold that thought, right? Yes. Don't say nothing yet, right? Okay. Then I'm going to skip to 41 just because I'm I want to make a point. I'm not saying anything. So <laughs> so he's also in front of Pharaoh in chapter 41. Mm-hmm. And th- in verse 16, this is what Joseph said. Um, no, let me read 15 for context because I want to make a point. Yes. 15 says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of mm. peace. And when I thought about this, this would be a perfect time. You in front of like the highest monarch yep. in Egypt. You've been in prison. Now's the time to, you know, say, yes, I can interpret dreams. Pharaoh, just tell me. And I, yep. right? Because, you know, Pharaoh's words were, I have heard say of thee. I've heard of you that you, you are interpreter of genes and none of my wise men can do it. <laughs> so just tell, you know, show your skill. Show, you know, mm. But no, like Joseph's response in both these situations, when he was before fellow prisoners, as well Mm. as before a king, his response is, do not interpretations belong to God, and God will give you an answer of peace. And I thought, wow, this is the same spirit Daniel had. Their first response was to glorify God. They never thought about themselves, even though, let's be real, they were both prisoners. Their situation was not very good. Mm -hmm. But they didn't think about that. Their Mm. only goal, their motive of action was, we want to elevate God. We want to lift up Jesus. Like, if he's lifted up, then it's all good. And Mm -hmm. I thought that, wow, that is literally the spirit of the servants of God, right? Mm. Then, the Lord brought me to this one. I was just like, wow, that's so amazing. Did you read verse 16? Didn't I? Uh, yeah, I did. You did, okay. Right, okay. God shall give fair an answer of peace. I did. It is not in me, dude. It is not in me. Bro, that's right. going to be in my next sermon. <laughs> it is not, not in me. me. That's what it's called. It's not in me. Yes. Yeah, not Yo, not if me. we thought like that, mm-hmm. we're going to bring it home. This podcast, we're talking, like, this is, should be real, practical stuff. Like, many of you have great jobs. Many of you are, are in high positions. And people are coming to you and saying, wow, brother so-and-so, uh, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. And what are you saying? Oh, it, yeah, it's in me. It's all in me. Joseph is saying, it's not in me. It's not in me, man. Mm-hmm. It's God. If you get anything from this study tonight, that it's God, not you. And we always have to give honor and glory to God. Many times, Chantal, God can't use us. Mm-hmm. because he knows I'll take all that glory, man. Mm-hmm. I want it all. And he has to humble us. Right. But Joseph and Daniel are like, man, dude, we want to be like Jesus ultimately, but I want to be like Joseph and Daniel. Mm-hmm. Right. That's awesome. It's not in me. That's in the next mm-hmm. sermon. It's not in me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, they were mm. so, because Daniel is also going to stand before Nebuchadnezzar. Mm-hmm. And when I read that phrase, Oh boy, Victor, mm-hmm. he stood before the King. And it triggered, you know, Elijah, when Elijah stood before King yes. Ahab. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I read something and it says that he could stand fearless before Ahab and not be swayed by all the pomp mm. and pride because he stood before God. He stood in the presence of God. Mm. And you wanted to mention some quotes of, of about prayer. Yes. And I thought about the reason why these men were able to be fearless, not disrespectful, but fearless before kings. Because, I mean, let's be real. With Nebuchadnezzar's temper, you know, him, Daniel just mentioning, it's not me, it's God. Nebuchadnezzar could have just like, you know what, I don't want to hear about your God. And just, you know, like, I'm, you know. So mm. Daniel was 
not even afraid of his yeah. own life. Yeah. He was willing to risk right. his life to give glory to God. And I thought it must be because he stood in the presence mm. or knelt in the presence of but a greater king. Chantal, that's shown in chapter one, too. Absolutely. Dude, Nebuchadnezzar could have sliced your head. You don't want to eat my food? Gone. Mm-hmm. He, Daniel has been consistent. When you're with God and you have a consistent relationship with God, you'll be consistent in your life in your work, in your life, in your practical life as you live. And it said he communed with the king in chapter one because he communed with the king of kings. Mm-hmm. And now Daniel, it's like almost like, oh yeah, Daniel, chapter one, you stood faithful. Good job, young man. I'm about to test that faith in the very next chapter. Mm-hmm. You're about to test all this 10 times wiser. Oh, you want to be a big shot, Daniel? The king is thinking, oh, okay, okay. I'm going to test this. And God want, God is looking to test Daniel's faith, his friend's faith, and Nebuchadnezzar's faith and all the wise men around. We're going to get in chapter three and they're going to do the exact same thing. Listen, I'm getting hyped, man. When you, when you mention that Chantal, it's like Kings, Kings, God has his people in front of Kings. You don't Mm -hmm. think God has a plan for your life. He wants you to be in front of Kings and Queens and princes and governors and presidents to tell of your faith. So stop thinking. And I'm staring at the camera. Stop thinking, listener, watcher, that God wants you to live. You know, he wants you to stand before kings. Mm -hmm. He created us to tell everyone, rich or poor, about his love. But, Victor, isn't there... um, Jesus prophesied in, in Matthew... That there would become, there would come a time mm. when we will literally stand oh, before yes. governors That's and kings right. to give account of our faith. Yes. And honestly, another thing I thought about when I read that was that there will come a time too when we will have to give an account That's for our right. faith. And and I read, while well, you look for also your prayer, your your quotes on yes, prayers. Yes, I got them. I also read a quote. That's great. That made I me like really. Victor, uh, boy. You always got the good quotes, Chantal. I don't know where you find them. Good quotes? What? You always find these gems. (laughs) I got too many gems. So it says, right? Never should a young minister rest Uh with a superficial knowledge of the truth, for he knows not where he may be required to bear witness for God. Mm -hmm. Many will have to stand before kings and before the learned of the earth to answer for their faith. Those who have only a superficial understanding of the truth have failed to become workmen that need not be ashamed. They'll be confused and will not mm. be able to clearly expound the scriptures. Mm. I was just like, wow, this is such a rebuke. Yeah. Like in order, like this is, you mentioned time. Like, you know, like, okay, so God is giving me more time. Mm-hmm. But are you spending it mm, on your mm, knees and mm. studying the word of God? Or on you on Instagram, TikTok, and the, all the mm. other rest. Because God is giving us extra time. We are in the last period of Earth's history. Yeah. What is our time occupied with? Are we spending it in prayer, in reading the word? Because <laughs> there is literally coming a time That's where right. we will have to stand before kings. There's going to be a big emergency. Yes. And if we don't know God, for one, if our aim or motive of action is not to give glory to him, and also there's another principle that I want to highlight. Hopefully we could get to mm-hmm. it. If our aim is not to give glory to God, and if we don't understand his word, we'll be confused. Confused. And confounded. And, uh, in Babylon. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Mercy. I mean, listen, this is why we need prayer. Check this out. Mm-hmm. This is from a book, Christ Object Lessons. Uh, and, and we were in prayer meeting talking about prayer, mm-hmm. how to talk to God. Our prayers are not to be selfish, asking merely for our own benefit. We are to ask that we may give. The principle of Christ's life must be the principle of our lives. For their sakes, he said, speaking to his disciples, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified. John 17, 19. The same devotion, the same self-sacrifice, the same subjection to the claims of God's word that were manifest in Christ must be seen in his servants. Our mission is not to serve or please ourselves. Mm. We are to glorify God, cooperating with him to save sinners. This was Daniel's prayer. Mm -hmm. Daniel is praying for himself, not only just like save my life. No, save my life so that we can save their life. That they can come to a knowledge of the true God. Mm -hmm. Now check this out. It said, in a night vision. So it says, "So so our prayers do not always seem to receive immediate answer. 
But Christ teaches us that we should not cease to pray. Prayer is not to work any change in God. It is to bring us into harmony with God. When we make our request to him, we may see that it is necessary for us. He may see, excuse me, God may see that it is necessary for us to search our hearts and repent of sin. Therefore, he takes us through test and trial. He brings us through humiliation that we may see what hinders the working of his Holy Spirit through us. Mm. This is why, do you guys, Lord, please help me. Daniel is praying for mercy mm -hmm. because Daniel knows I can't just talk to God without, with sin in my heart or a selfish prayer. I need to seek mercy because I need to be in, in harmony with God. Wow. And he, and, and you, you, you mentioned this Chantal, he starts to praise God. Can you read? No, no, no. Wait, wait, before what? we read. Oh, you want to keep going? Okay. <laughs> The first part of the first quote you read. Yes. Read it again for me. Our the one prayers, that talks about like not only praying for yourself. Okay, okay. Others. Our prayers are not to be to be a selfish asking, merely for our own benefit. We are to ask that we may give. The principle of Christ's life must be the principle of our lives. For his sakes, he said, speaking to his disciples, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified. Um, our, oh, it says our mission to the world is not to serve or please ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are to glorify God by cooperating with him to save sinners. We are to ask for blessings from God that we may communicate it to others. Mm -hmm. The capacity of receiving is preserved only by imparting. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. We cannot continue to receive heavenly tre treasure without it, without it communicating to those around us. So, Victor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. So remember I said there are two principles that really stood out to me in this chapter that yes. Lord was trying to teach me for these mm -hmm. past two weeks. The first principle was like our purpose is to glorify God. Mm -hmm. The second principle. Okay. So I have to read it before. Okay. Right. So it's just going to reinforce what you just mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I read in Genesis was also about Joseph. Okay. So I also read for some reason I went up like so I read 40 verse 8, but I also went up and it says, right. Speaking of Joseph and the captain of the guard, verse four, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them and they continued with him for a season. So when I looked at that word, serve them, it means to wait on or minister to them. Mm. So then I kept on reading. Right. And it says, and they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man in his dream one night, each man, according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. Check this out now. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold, they were sad. Mm. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his house of his Lord's house saying, wherefore look ye so sadly today. Mm. And as I thought about, it, I was just like, Oh wait, Joseph could have been wallowing in the fact that, listen, I got falsely accused and I'm in prison, yep. but his master charged him to serve them. And he ministered unto them by asking them what was wrong with them. He put aside what he was going through mm. and he literally served them. But is this just because his master asked him or was this the spirit that God invested with Joseph yep. and the spirit also of God's servant? So then I read chapter 39 mm -hmm. verse four and it says, right. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he mm. served him and he made him an overseer over his house and all that he had put into his hands also meaning to minister. And I started thinking about the principle that governs Babylon versus the principle that governs the people in God's kingdom. Yes. And you read that the same principle or the same spirit that activated Christ and Christ himself says, like I came not to be ministered to, but That's to right. minister unto. And I'm reminded of when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, mm. he literally came down from heaven and he stooped as low as to wash the dirty feet <laughs> of his disciples. Mm. And I thought, that's the spirit of Christ. Satan wanted to be like the most high, not to have his character. Even Judas. Even Judas. Yet, and that's why he, he betrayed Christ. Because he's just like. And I thought, wow, Father, how many times like, have mm. I not been sensitive to the needs of those that were around me? Yeah. But the spirit of Christ and the spirit of his servants is a spirit that serves their fellow men. And so 
And it reminded me too, the Lord showed me also in Exodus when we were reading about Bezalel or whatever, yeah. that the reason why God gave them that knowledge was to build his temple. But you also know that Peter highlights that we are the house of God. We are yep. the temple of God. Right. So the knowledge and all the wisdom that God gave them was supposed to build the temple wow. of God. And God gave us the practical example in Exodus. But in the New Testament, he gave us a spiritual application. Mm. You you are the temple of God. Mm -hmm. Whatever wisdom and knowledge that God has given us, the wisdom of architecture or math or science or whatever, it's to be mm. used to bless our fellow men and yes. to glorify God. But a lot of times we're mm. using it to build our own kingdoms. Like Nebuchadnezzar used all his wisdom to build his mm. own kingdom. But Daniel was so different. He used the wisdom that God had given him to bless his fellow men, mm. to relieve the burden of the king, but also to glorify God. Mm. Wow, I mean, there's so many. This is how we should be studying the Bible. This is not any wisdom of ourselves. Absolutely not. <laughs> but you see how God's word speaks, uh, listeners and viewers. Mm -hmm. God's word. Jesus, if you didn't think Jesus was in the Old Testament, man, he's all over the mm -hmm. Old Testament. Right? Leading his people. Leading his people. And just to make a note, this whole interaction of Genesis, uh, I mean, uh, Daniel 12 to 16 and then 17 to 23 um has Ma has Dan uh, matthew 5 all over it listen blessed are the peacemaker oh man uh what do you do if you're in it uh pray for your enemies those who hurt you despitefully use you right love your enemies mm -hmm. pray for them that that despitefully use you and hurt you i mean daniel is literally living mm -hmm. with the spirit of jesus Matthew 5, it, Daniel's living Matthew 5 right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Matthew 6. A mm -hmm. couple more quotes as we begin to close. Okay. Beautiful stuff on prayer. Um, says, uh, here we go. Is this oh, wait, 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 where is it? <laughs> come on, come on. Okay. God, we must show a firm, undeviating trust in God. Mm -hmm. Often he delays the answer in order to try our faith, to test our genuineness of our desire. Having asked according to his word, we should believe his promise and press our petitions with a determination that will not be denied. Mm -hmm. This is how Daniel gets the vision. This mm -hmm. is how Daniel gets the secret to his answer. United prayer and persistent prayer. God does not ask. God does not say ask once. Mm. You shall receive. He bids us ask. Unswervingly persist in prayer. The persistent asking brings the petitioner into a more earnest attitude and gives him an increased desire to receive the things which he asks. But many have not a living faith. Mm. This is why they do not see the power of God. Their weakness is a result of their unbelief. They have more faith in their own working mm. than the working of God for them. They take the they take themselves into their own keeping. Oh, that's dangerous. Mm -mm -mm. Our prayers are to be earnest and persistent as a petition of a needy friend who asks for the loaves at midnight. This is mm. talking about that. Our part is to pray and believe. Watch unto prayer. Watch and cooperate with a prayer hearing God. I want you to understand all these quotations. This is showing that our God is not some Babylonian mystic, mysticism, spiritualistic God that's floating mm -hmm. around. Our God is a personal God. Mm -hmm. We serve a personal God. And Daniel ends with this because I want to end with this, these last two verses. And he says this, and Daniel answered and said, blessed be the name of God forever and ever mm. for wisdom and might are his. Mm. He changes the times and season. He removes kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and in the and the light dwelleth with him. Mm -hmm. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. This is the God we serve. So I want to ask you a question, and you can put it in the comments when you see this. What's your dream? What's your vision? 
listener, viewer, what's your dream? Mm. You have you may be listening and saying, "Man, God, I got dreams." Mm. Woohoo! <laughs> Young people, you may be I, li- listening to this podcast and saying, "God, I got dreams." Mm-hmm. I want to do things. Mm. I want to be somebody. God has the answer to all your dreams. He has the interpretation, all your dreams, surrender your dreams, your desires, your wants, everything to God. And he'll give you that answer. And it's going to be an answer of peace. It's going to be an answer of blessing. It's going to be a solemn answer that he wants to use you in King's palaces. Are you prepared for that? Am I prepared for that? So doesn't matter who's the president now, who's the president going to come, who you're going to vote for here, who's going to come this way. doesn't matter what season you're in. God is in control of literally everything. Mm -hmm. And we got to trust him. Chantal, give us the last word. Give us the last gem and uh, say a prayer for us. And then uh, as we close. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a quote I want to read. Go ahead. Bring it. Bring the quotes. I sent it to my mom so I wouldn't forget. (laughs) Beautiful, man. I. There's so many I have here, but it's just, it's too much. It's too much. So it's actually in keeping with what you Mm -hmm. read about, you know, we trust our own wisdom. Mm -hmm. The Lord reminded me of this today. The wisdom of any human agent is not sufficient for the planning Mm -hmm. and devising in this time. And this is from Country Living. So she's speaking of the very last Mm -hmm. days of Mm -hmm. Earth's history. Spread every plan before God with fasting and with humbling of the soul before the Lord Jesus and commit thy ways unto the Lord. The sure promise is Mm. he will direct the paths. He is infinite in resources. The Holy One of Israel who calls the host of heaven by name and holds the stars of heaven in position has you individually in his keeping. Mm. I thought that was beautiful. Number one. We don't have any wisdom, so don't trust it. (laughs) But also, if, like Daniel, we humble ourselves Mm -hmm. and pray, he will give us his wisdom. Beautiful. I have a request. You do? I have another quote. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Check this out. This is going to get you hyped. This is the last quote. Christ's Object Lessons, a beautiful book. Um, Take the word of Christ as your assurance. Mm. Has he not invited you to come unto him? Never allow yourself to talk in a hopeless, discouraging way. Mm. Whoa, it's going to get it's going to get even more heavier. If you do, you will lose much Mm. by looking at the appearances and complaining when difficulties and pressure come. You give evidence of a sickly, enfeebled faith. Hey, that that sound like Nebuchadnezzar. (laughs) What was Nebuchadnezzar doing? Mm. Complaining bribing anger furious Mm -hmm. impulsive all or nothing thinking extreme Mm -hmm. he had no faith yet talk and act as if your faith was invincible the lord is rich in resources he owns the world look heavenward in faith look to him who has light power and efficiency does that not encapsulate 20 to 23 Like, God owns everything, guys. Mm -hmm. And we're on the podcast tonight. I told you we were back. And I have a confession, another one. I'm sorry. We are not back. God is back. And once you get into Daniel, Mm -hmm. my spirit just starts to get on fire. Because, listen, this week was a crazy and a tough week. But God has brought us through to this podcast. And I'm excited. I'm happy that we, God can use us once again to encourage you. So if you're listening... Talk faith. Talk faith that it's invincible. You ever talk some superhero faith? Like, man, God, we can do anything together. We, God, you and God can do anything once you surrender your life to him. If you enjoyed this podcast, which I know you did because God is good. um, And even if you didn't, God is still good. (laughs) Listen, it's hit me. We're like Nebuchadnezzar a lot. But God has shown me that, man, you got to you gotta have more faith, Vic. You're walking around here with a sickly, enfeebled faith. And you need more faith. Look heavenward in faith. Look to him who has light, power, and efficiency. 
So if your faith is enfeebled, if you've been acting like Nebuchadnezzar, if you want to be like Daniel in emergencies and in trials and in difficulty, and when pressure comes, if you want to be a diamond under pressure, look to Jesus, look to God, um, because he's in control. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's reason together podcast. It's on the screen. Like this video and share it with people. Um, so the message can go out and uh, we appreciate all the love and support. Listen, I, we appreciate, I'm speaking for myself and Chantal. We appreciate all the prayers, all the love, all the support, all the comments, please. Can you guys keep commenting? We love the comments. Chantal's going to answer all your questions <laughs> and, uh, we can't wait to hear from you guys. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven. Thank you so much for Daniel chapter two. Thank you for. Um, being a God who's a personal God, who wants a relationship with us, who wants to fulfill all our dreams, who wants to use us to do great things in the world, but not great things for ourselves, but to honor and glorify you, Lord. Increase our faith. Those who are listening, those who are watching, increase their faith. Give us invincible faith like Daniel, Lord. Trusting and looking to you who is changing, who is in control of the seasons, the kings, the times, everything. Lord, we look to you. Guide and bless us um, going forward as we continue our study in the book of Daniel. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Next week will be the foundation of all Bible prophecy. Don't miss it on the Let's Reason Together podcast. Peace and blessings. blessings.